All right, I want to look at Kepler's law um, one more time, and this time we want to kind of examine something called the astronomical unit that we can use, or that astronomers use, or invented, really, to make uh, Kepler's law a little bit easier to calculate some things. So um, if we look at um, Kepler's third law, if you, rem you remember the law of harmonies, it was uh, the period of one planet squared, and that's how long it takes it to orbit, over the period of some other planet squared. That ratio is the same as the cubes of the, um, the distance from the sun to that particular uh, planet. This is called the law of harmonies here. And uh, so if we, if we have, um, let's say we have a sun here, and uh, uh, let's say we have Mercury, Mercury is here on its orbit around the sun. And uh, then a little further out we have we have Earth. And it's going around the sun. Didn't do that very good. And let's say that uh, you know way out here somewhere we have my favorite planet that is no longer a planet, unfortunately. Uh, Pluto. Let's say Pluto is clear out here, and so it's orbiting around here like this. Okay, um, and uh, we want to figure out, like, you know, how long does it take for Mercury to orbit, and how long does it take for uh, Pluto to orbit? We know that it takes the Earth one year to orbit. So what we have done in astronomy to make everything nice and easy is that, you know, we we can compare everything to Earth. And figure out, you know, in for so for like this period here, a period squared, we could put in a period for the Earth, we could put 365.25 days. And then for the distance, for the radius from the sun to the Earth, we could put in like 93 million miles as we did in our first problem. And then we'd have to know how many million miles it is to some other planet, and then we'd be able to figure out how long it takes that particular planet to orbit in days. Well, what we decided to do is to make our math easier is if we use for our um, period, if we use the period for Earth as um, one year, which we can do because it takes one year, an Earth year to go around, then in for this uh, period here, we'll be putting one. Well, that's nice. Now, it'll be even nicer if we could put one in for our distance from the sun to the earth. And how would we do that? Because it's actually 93 million miles. It's, there's nothing that it would actually make it be a unit of one. So we came up with, we just made up a unit, the radius out from the sun, from the sun to the earth. We said, let's just call that one sun to earth distance. And so we called it one a U, which stands for an astronomical unit. So an astronomical unit is nothing but a, a just a made-up um, distance. You know, you could do this anyway. You could take the distance from your your house to your school and say there is one house to school distance, and you could put ratios of how many house to school distances there are from like here to California or something. So that's all they did is they just said, okay, from the sun to the Earth, we're going to call that one astronomical unit. And so we can measure how many astronomical units, how many Sun to Earth distances there are of any kind of other orbits. And the reason we want to do this is if because we put one year in for the period of the Earth, one squared is one, and if we put our uh, one AU in for our radius, uh, our radius of our orbit for Earth cubed, that's also going to be one. And this these parts cancel out down here, and we end up with a very uh, simplified version of Kepler's law that the period of any planet squared is equal to the, the radius of orbit of that planet um, cubed. I don't really even need the ones anymore because we're just going to talk about a single a particular uh, planet. Now, the only way this is going to simplify and work is if you're going to put the distance from the sun to the planet for R in AUs, in astronomical units. And then if you do that, the period of that planet will be in years, will be in Earth years. 
this is really doing it just like we've always been doing it. Like we had days and we had millions of miles. So this would have to be in millions of miles up here. And uh, this here would be in uh, um, would be in days. So we're just going to put, we're going to decide one and one. So that if we just take a nice simple equation for Kepler's law, and as long as we put the distance out to the planet in astronomical units, then we can figure out what the period is to that particular uh, planet or around that orbit in uh, Earth year. So if we look at uh, Mercury, we'll do this all in red since this is Mercury. Mercury right here. Um, the the uh, distance to uh, Mercury in astronomical um, units is, uh, is 0 0.39, 0 0.39 AU. So if we want to find the period of orbit, how long does it take for the Mercury to go around the Sun, it's going to be T equals the square root, since I had T squared, T equals the square root of the R distance, 0.39 uh, cubed. So I just take the square root of the distance to the planet in AU cubed, and I would always know then how many Earth years it's going to take for um, that planet to go around. Well, this is a lot closer to the sun, so it's zipping around here a lot faster than the Earth. It only takes about um, 0.24 years for it for the uh, Mercury to get all the way around once. So basically in one quarter of a year. So during one season, during the winter season, the Mercury will zip around the planet, um, zip around the sun one time. It'll zip around the sun about four times in one, uh, at the same amount of time that it takes Earth to go around the sun one time. Um, if we look at uh, my favorite non-planet anymore, Pluto, we'll do that and we'll do that in green. Sorry about that. Do that in green. So um, the distance out to, from the sun out to Pluto is, is a lot, it's about 39 astronomical units. It's, it's a long ways out there. And so the period of Pluto would be the square root of 39 cubed. And if you put that in your calculator and calculate that out, it's an astonishing 244 Earth years. Pretty amazing. It'll take Pluto um, 244. The Earth will go around the sun 244 times while Pluto goes around one time, which is pretty pretty amazing thinking about your lifespan, um, that Pluto will, you know, only makes it around once in, in uh, you know, many, many generations. So uh, this is what we can do with Kepler's third law. If we understand the astronomical unit, which is the distance from the sun to the Earth, we call that one sun-Earth distance or one astronomical unit. And if we put uh, ever, all the distances of the planets in astronomical units, we can do a nice quick calculation of the period of that planet around the sun. Hopefully that uh, makes a lot of sense to you. And we've kind of simplified Kepler's third